Hi. Canal Camille is a part participatory performance poetry project that has been taking place over the course of 2017 through various collaborative multimedia site-specific performances at different locations along the route of the Glamorganshire Canal. In this paper I will present a selection of videos of the performances and discuss the project's use of collage poetics, participatory performance and multimedia documentation. I was brought up in Abercannon, which you can see just where the two uh, canals meet on the first map there. And for the past 10 years, I've been living in pont de which is at the bottom of the first map, and in Ridvelin, which is near the top of the second map. While I've been working in Nantgaru, which is just a little bit lower down than Ridvelin uh, on the second map. So all these places that uh, I've been involved with are all connected by the Glamorganshire Canal, which you can see there, spanning the two maps, flowing from Merthyr Tidville at the top down to Cardiff at the bottom of the second map. The canal was constructed in 1790 and closed in 1944. Most of it has now been filled in, much of it during the construction of the A470 dual carriageway in the 1970s yet the contours of the canal can still be traced. They are visible in the curves of the roadways and terraces of streets. Its channel remains an artery of commerce and transit as the A470, superimposed over the old canal route, traffics its vessels back and forth between the capital and the valleys each day. Just as modern road structures are laid down over the outline of the canal, in the poems and performances of Canal Chemy, there is a layering of present and past as I collage various resource texts with my own field notes. The route to the deleted canal gives the Canal Chemie project its spine. It provides a structural frame, the poem's form and shape. The list of locations supplies the spatial and temporal plan for a serial process. The canal might be described as a creode a term coined by the biologist C. H. Waddington and often used in the poetics and poetry of Alan Fisher to describe a pathway of canalised change. It provides a model for imagining how a process develops over time. Any particular point in the process can be visualised as a ball rolling along the channel. As the process develops, the ball rolls up and down the sides of the canal. I'll read a poem from somewhere in the middle of the sequence, um, a section of that poem called Tip in Space. Deposited to time lag, two days occur. This is often our map. Road huffs, trains sneezing in above, peck of drizzle pins. I'll get her that dress anyway, or she'd love that, she'd think she's it in that. Scouring voids between the tip in space, I move a piece of marketable cost in ghost-like counterpart. We are negotiating on who is to die. Ambulance lights trill beyond the 40 signs, and then we caught the train then, because it was hammering down. Knew he should have taken something with him, see? Tannoy shouts across river. The names of those who gave evidence are to be found deeply buried in a narrow fringe of coconut palms circling the coast of the ravaged interior. It's all inclusive, oh, all inclusive. Crossing the pelicans, a fine spray washes down into my face. Would you rather fancy coming around for tea? The final beauty of their memoranda will appear in a separated off liminal space. I walk on shielded by railway wall, burp cucumber lunch, just going to get a packet of fags and then I know. This collage method of bringing together things that are chronologically or spatially distant could be considered a kind of alchemy. Alchemy could be described as a bringing together of things that are sequent but not consequent. I came to the idea of alchemy while researching the area of Nantgaru where I work. Nantgaru is the site of the China Works, set up there in 1813 by William Billingsley. It was a financially disastrous venture as Billingsley was obsessed with trying to produce the finest porcelain. 90% of the porcelain was ruined in firing. I saw Billingsley's doomed experiments at Nantgaru as a parallel to the activities of the German alchemist Johann Böttger, who was credited with discovering the method of porcelain production in the early 18th century. 
For me, Billingsley too was an alchemist, striving for a fusion of matter so fine as to be translucent, near intangible. The production of porcelain seemed analogous to the albedo stage of the alchemical opus, the stage of a blue show, characterised by whiteness, a purification to open up new pathways. I see the alchemist as akin to the figure of the shaman, as evoked in the poetry of Maggie O'Sullivan and the art of Joseph Boyce. In her book, In the House of the Shaman, O'Sullivan quotes Boyce to stress the idea of transformation and substance. This is precisely what the shaman does in order to bring about change and development. His nature is therapeutic. I've been trying to explore this idea in Can Alchemy. Collage methods are used to transform my research materials. The canal as creod in Waddington's sense, a canalised pathway of development and change, provides the structure along which the process takes place, so that literally the urban map of the valleys can be seen to follow the structure laid out by the canal. But also, metaphorically, the valleys may be doomed to re replay and repeat the patterns of exploitation of its industrial past. A kind of shamanic, poetic and social alchemy, as recommended by O'Sullivan and Boyce, may be necessary to change the creodic pattern, the structure, and open up new pathways. A portion of the Nantgaru section of the sequence was featured in a new Welsh Review poetry showcase. I'll show you a clip of the video where my poem is narrated by Ashley Owen over a video by Jordan Blower and Eleanor Johnson. Stipple calyx, petal ions, whole surface florid. I must tell you now, Father has got into a situation. When the lock is filled and I've made level, I put the tow line back on the mast, open the gate and get the horse going again. JCB croaks backward out of hatch, bristly shrubs, subgrass that would lay a lot through barbed mesh. Lanky ragwort, the agent's house and warehouse opposite the pottery, Edward Edmund's boat dock, and the brook feeding the mill. Moss fringed pavements, leaves whisper, cracked polystyrene tray by dandelion clock. The brook supplies water through a succession of holding ponds, stream culverted under canal, hubcap banking, hail prochendi. Oxide sprigs, corn flowered fracture, angelicate to skewer. You and Mr. Billingsley are jointly and severally bound to us in penalty of £1,000 to forbear from communicating the secret to any person or persons whomsoever. It is right, in it? Just come from the office. It's a cold evening and getting late, locking down on our way home to read them in. Luminous vests, black metal fence with silver spears, absolute surveillance systems, chain truck clanks out of air hangar door to depot, Tall blackberry cake wants to war for the night. Sweet sour stench of waste plant. Clang echo of girder. No, I say, we must keep going. Perhaps by morning the ice will be behind the gates. Violin radio. Bleat of jackdaw. Shudder scatter of distant engines. Perlicious tiptoe vibrates the surface of petals. Ivory sepals fold a color lens. I had some thoughts of writing to him, but hardly knew how to act, as his conduct was so strange. Private parking, these barriers are locked at end of each day. Magpies on buttercup daisy lawn, black glass office perimeter, storehouse on the wharf, lorries behind steel palisades. Under the bridge, the canal loops past the grounds of Dufferin Food and passes by cottages, homes of colliers who work the levels of private aft. Always level to flooding, the river is high, Hail pardo, red brick blocks, vertical blinds, plastic wrapped pallets behind lorry doors, wasps buzz in broom bush, whipping the melodious clay, calcinate the bone marriage. I wish I had means to send for you. I have none.
Billingsley's porcelain alchemy led me to consider other industries in the valleys. Billingsley's small private experiments with clay, bone, ash and sand were paralleled by the large-scale industrial alchemy of the ironworks in Merthyr Tydfil, the tinworks in Ridvelin and Melling Griffith, the coal mines that dot the route of the canal's carboniferous corridor. I began to see the furnaces at Kavartha as a giant alchemical alembic. The ironworks was a temple of Mars, the blackening fires of the Negrido stage at the head of the canal's alchemical opus. I invited a small group of poets and artists for a vernal equinox ritual at the furnace ruins at Kavartha. These included Lyndon Davis, Penny Hallas, Chris Paul, Rhys Trimble and John Marr. Blast for breakfast on blustering revetments. You working today? No. Cascading down of some rural outposts in the hills of Crystal Palace and Mold. A clammy source there with magical properties. This is science, the roots and practices of modern science. Diaphragm investigation. White eyed colour squealing and circular Caribbean trust. Pigeons squat on furnace throat. Ivy claws the brick belly vase. Submerged by debris as it reaches the lower lands. Tall sill, Rockwell, Bennett and Brixton. Did dendrochronology slice into a section of a tree and unravel the millennia's travails, glacial shifts, climactic variations? Devilish the eager service of is of reviewer well archaeological time impulsive. Okay. It's seen this danger is belonging to us because he shows that they don't want to have our slave. For sleeps into bones. Possessing his eyes and his blood. He's not on the way and he's not on the way. 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 <laughs> Inviting other voices into the project was another kind of layering, similar to the collage layering already taking place in the poems. Huddled in the chambers of the furnace's brick vessel, John Marr trolled the hidden rivers of Brixton, while Rhys Trimble summoned the slate mines of Bethesda. The reverberations of our voices in the furnace's ventricles drew attention to the acoustic shape of the space. The site became part of the performance as we inhabited the map, exploring the space of the poem in the live environment. Just as the collage methods had provided a spatial textual arrangement for the reader to navigate, the performances spatialised the text by situating it on the ground rather than suspending it in a map-like overview. The live performances led to further collaborations in post-production as I worked with Penny Hallas to produce the Blast film. Utilising her video of the furnace and my audio recordings of the performance, cut up voices were superimposed against layered visuals. <laughs> Thank you. 
As the voices overlap and interfere, coagulate and fuse, there is an opportunity to break the canalised patterns and structures to evoke new pathways. In navigating the industrial scars that thread along the wound of the old canal, we, like Boys and O'Sullivan, hope that there is a healing element to the process. Many participants have spoken about the therapeutic experience of negotiating these locations of trauma, their histories of neglect of local communities, participation in imperialist exploitation and large-scale abuses of natural resources. In making use of collage, collaborative and multimedia approaches, the project aims to remedy the cultural amnesia of the filled-in canal by putting voices in those deleted spaces, while at the same time remaining alert to our own potential exploitation of other people's voices and memories. To counter an overload of memorialising by allowing for gaps, breaks and silences so that a forgetting can also take place to open the canal to new pathways. Thanks for listening.